So next, I'm going to show you how to run Asterix and also where the Asterix files are located. There are two ways to run Asterix, in the foreground and in the background. Running the background is how Asterix runs almost all the time, while running the foreground is mainly used to debug some startup problems. So let's start with the foreground mode. In order to run Asterix in the foreground mode, you have to type Asterix minus VC. And as you can see, Asterix is starting now, showing you what modules are loading and what configuration files are read. In order to stop Asterix, you have to type the stop now command. And we have used two switches for Asterix when starting. And that is a minus V, which stands for verbose, and minus C, which stands for console. Meaning you'll be connected to the Asterix console as soon as Asterix will run. And you can use any number of the minus Vs to get even more verbose. So let's try starting Asterix with three minus Vs. Okay, so the second way to run Asterix is in the background. And as I said before, this is the more common way to run it. In order to start Asterix in that mode, you simply have to type Asterix at the command line. Let's check if Asterix has started. And to connect a running Asterix instance, you have to type the Asterix minus R. And the minus R actually stands for remote. And as you can see, connected asterisk 1.4.19 currently running on asterisk. And that means that's the computer name. And also the process ID number. And that's the same as we've seen before. The asterisk command line is a very powerful way to control it. There are a huge number of ways in commands here. So if you type the question mark and you'll be presented with all the available commands. But be careful, most of the commands consist of a few words. So actually, in order to get the full command, you have to type the first word and then type the question mark again. For example, SIP show and hitting question mark will present you with all the available commands for SIP show. The most important commands we'll use in the next videos are reload, and that makes asterisk to reread configuration files, core show channels, and that will present you with current calls that go through your asterisk, and also stop now. We've used that before to stop asterisk. And you can get help for any command in asterisk by simply typing help, and then the command you're interested in. For example, help stop. This shows you that there are three subcommands for stop, with a small escalation for each of them. Or you can just, just type help, and this will show you all the commands and subcommands along with the explanation. In order to detach from Asterix console, you have to type quit. Remember that if you type stop now, you're going to stop Asterix from running, and you'll not be able to connect to any calls. Asterix has three main directories where its files are stored. The most common one is etse, or etc, forward slash asterisk. And this is where all the configuration files are placed. Each of Asterix modules has its own configuration file. For example, the SIP channels module has, has its um, SIP.conf. And the IX, IAX channels module, IAXConf. So in order to configure our part of Asterix, you'll have to edit its configuration file. The user lib Asterix modules is a place where all the modules are placed. So as you can see here, chan underscore sip for sip channels and so on. The last place you have to know about is var lib Asterix. Here you're going to find a number of directories which are used for different purposes. For example, the agi-bin is used for scripting purposes. Sounds is the place where all of Asterix sounds are stored and so on. I'm actually going to return to these directories more details in um, subsequent videos.